Welcome to the podcast. Whether or not and to what degree with the Fox Carolina weather team, at least half of the weather team today, it is <laughs> Chief Meteorologist Kendra Kent and Meteorologist Bob Trihe. Hello. Yes, and we're here to just kind of recap what we've been through. We're in the middle of severe weather season. Certainly no time to let our guard down, uh, but we've already been through a few events. There's a kind of an end in sight. Once we get into those hot summer months, we don't worry about tornadoes quite as much, but we've got another month ahead, um, you know, with that potential. And, you know, Bob, we were talking before, uh, there's been a theme to the latest severe event. Seems like a lot of them are happening on the weekends these days. A lot of them happening on the weekends. And the one weekend uh, I could talk about, Kendra, is the one where we had the tornado in, we had Oconee County and Spartanburg, I believe, Rutherford County and McDowell County. Yeah, four So we had four of those. And we had the EF1 in Seneca. And I was here and all of a sudden just had a, a warning pop up. Uh, there was not a lot of strong rotation with it. You really couldn't tell from the Doppler radar yeah. from the velocities. That That's a fancy way of, of looking at the winds around a tornado. It was very, very small, and I was caught by surprise. The tornado warning came out, went on the air right away, uh, and then... Uh, I know you had mentioned it was Stella's birthday that it day. It was Stella's birthday. Yes. And that's one of the reasons, you know, Nicole Pape came in right. to back you up with covering those storms. And, you know, like you mentioned, it was a very difficult day to spot rotation on radar. And so many folks were asking because we got that crazy video out of Seneca yes. of the car being flipped. Thank God those people were fine that were in the car, no major injuries. Um, but I know, Bob, you got to talk to Trisha Palmer of National weather service about that because i mean how, how many questions did we get about that just just tons wondering why wasn't there a tornado warning on that particular cell because eventually spartanburg was warned on and so was rutherford mcdowell all those right. but it was that quick little circulation and you know i think trisha had a pretty good response you know we're not going to put words in her <laughs> mouth but essentially you know i know you got to interview her what did she kind of tell you about well, uh, she told me, she gave me the scenario that mm -hmm. there were two meteorologists on duty that were very, very experienced. She happened to be out of town. And that when you look at the radar and the velocities, it is just so tiny. I mean, you look at the video and the, tr the path, I should say the track, the width, I should say, was only 15 yards for that tornado, Kendra. So you look at the video, it was just spinning through the parking lot. It almost yeah. looked like one of those dust devils that you see during a summer day. But she had mentioned that it, it might have been just two scans that that very tiny uh, rotation was there and that it was so hard to pick up on. Yeah. You know, uh, usually you can see a, a definite signature there uh, on the velocities and you can pull the trigger on a tornado warning. Uh, but they saw it just so quick. And she said they see those all the time, those kind of signatures on radar. Mm -hmm that you know you can't really warn on those but in retrospect she was saying you know it was you know not a good thing that a warning wasn't issued mm -hmm. because we had that car spun around we had uh damage with that tornado as it came through with winds over 90 miles per hour yeah absolutely and you under you know you have to kind of understand where they're coming from because the last thing you want is for folks to hear tornado warning and say oh we get those all the time, mm -hmm. you know, no big deal. It needs to be for something that is significant, that is seen on Doppler radar as a true threat. And again, those minor circulations can be seen with a lot of storms. And I think just from the video evidence, we saw how small that tornado was mm -hmm. that can you imagine just trying to pick up on something that small, you know, that far away from a, you know, GSP airport and it's it's basically on the micro scale, it is. Um, which would have just been you know very very difficult. But I know it's it's hard because how do you tell someone that was affected by that tornado that well right. oh, you know if those things happen? But it, it's just you don't right. want to the the public to develop um, you know apathy when it comes to a tornado warning. You have to be pretty sure about it when you when you issue for sure. And she had mentioned that too. You don't want the cry wolf syndrome mm -hmm. where yes, you're issuing like a tornado way. warning for every little pixel you might see uh, that might be a problem. Granted, uh, it was a tornado and it was yeah. dangerous and it was a weekend. A lot of folks out and about. Uh, but on the other hand, you don't want the cry wolf syndrome when you have a tornado warning every few minutes because she would say with a uh, signature like that, they'd be issuing tornado warnings left and right. Yeah, absolutely. And again, that's so they walk a line and we respect what they do. Right, and, exactly. And have a great partnership with mm -hmm. National Weather Service. We're really lucky. Um, the other thing I was going to mention, Bob, was this last weekend we had those, you know, the storms that, you know, 
woke up pets and kids alike yeah. on a Saturday night, uh, some some loud ones, but we were spared any tornadoes this past Saturday. And we're taping this on April 26th. This was so it was April 24th right. when we had those storms. Um, you know, uh, a lot of times our area will get spared of severe weather. And usually the limiting factor for us is that surface instability. And that was really what didn't, or surface based, that's really what never did quite pan out to be very big that day, but I know we were watching it, right, Bob? We were, uh, we were watching, and of course, we don't mind the noise. You know, thunder's scary to yeah. children and, and pets. It's the other stuff, the instability, the rotation and all that, which we did not see. Uh, some of those storms did look pretty ominous as they were moving in, Kendra, on uh, Saturday. We had mm -hmm. a lot of red and orange showing up, indicating a lot of rain, but nothing severe. I think Rabin County had some reports of hail, but yeah. uh, that was uh, about it. But I was a little worried because, you know, anytime you have that warm front moving north, we had some shear as well. Uh, that was kind of the setup like we had several weeks before that, where uh, we had the warnings pop up out of nowhere on an afternoon where we weren't expecting oh, anything in the way of severe weather. The day I was supposed to be actually doing traffic, mm -hmm. and I got out of traffic and came back in here, and you were already covering tornado warnings. Yeah, you know, those warm fronts can be very, very sneaky. And in our area, often what does keep us from seeing the worst of the weather, and I'll, heart, I'll actually, you know, mention that tomorrow, again, we're t taping this on the 26th, April 27th, will be 10 years since that huge outbreak in Alabama, parts mm. of Mississippi, and that insane supercell that actually made it all the way to Lake Burton. Um, so getting really close to us, but we were saved from that tornado outbreak by the fact that it arrived at night for us, but also we didn't have any instability. We had a wedge that had built in, built in and I think often in, our, in the situations that where we have that severe potential, our area can get saved by that, but it doesn't happen every time. So I feel like that's one of the reasons we always emphasize, look, you know, severe, the severe threat tornadoes, all the ingredients have to come together and it doesn't always happen, but it certainly can in right. our area. Um, but, you know, we do get lucky because of that, you know, environmental factor that we often mm -hmm. get wedged in with cool air. Right. And, um, you know, the cool air wedge is something kind of unique to this area, but it, it also goes into parts of Georgia and through uh, portions of North Carolina where you get that cool air that comes down um, from a high pressure that's to our north. And it basically just kind of gets wedged in against the mountains. Mm -hmm. So that helps us stay nice and stable and in a way uh, kind of acts like a block. For but if that wedge is retreating mm -hmm. and then that warm air is moving in, you know, that's just another... Uh, uh, kind of a fly in the ointment as yes. far as predicting because severe the, weather, right? Because much of the country, they don't have the wedge, we do. Nope, and the wedge boundary can often be where severe weather happens because right. it adds an extra level of shear and wind change. So you just, yeah, it's a very complicated <laughs> scenario, but uh, it's a good thing for us on many occasions. It sometimes limits us from seeing what they get really bad out to the west. Right. But the good news is severe weather season will end late May is usually when we see, and I say severe season, really tornado season. Right. Because we shift into that summer storm season um, when we don't have as active of a jet stream. We don't have the upper support really for um, organized severe weather and the potential of rotating storms like tornadoes. But, you know, Bob, we get um, I know this will be technically your first full summer with us. You've been you <laughs> right. came in in August. Uh -huh. I know um, June and July can be can be somewhat nuts because of our microbursts that we see here. You know, we just get all that heat built up and you get a little bit of dry air aloft and that evaporative cooling. And I mean, poosh, we get some wind that is uh, something else. So, you know, like we True. always tell people, severe thunderstorm warnings, you have to take those just as serious as tornado warnings, really. You've got to remain at least indoors away from windows because that wind can be sometimes just as strong as a weak tornado. Well, absolutely, too. And if you let your guard down in the summertime, you're out on your boat or mm -hmm. out and about and uh, having a cookout or whatever, and we have the isolated pop-up thunderstorms, they could be small, but they could pack a punch, obviously with a lot of wind and hail and dangerous lightning too. So even though we say isolated, you know, pop-up thunderstorms, if you're out on your boat still, you know, keep an eye out of the sky. If it gets dark, just head back to dock, you know, back oh, to yeah. port because, uh, you know, you can get under one of those little cells and it can be pretty tough. Yeah, it's just not worth risking it. And, you know, people can get struck by lightning and all sorts of damage done from the wind. Um, but again, 
luckily tornado threat typically goes down during the summer. So that's like one thing we don't have to worry about quite as much. The other thing we're not going to have to worry about quite as much over the next few months will be the pollen. Uh. Uh, we're seeing all of that go down. <laughs> so a severe weather threat goes down, sort of. We have to, we watch the pollen threat go down. And you've been on the pollen beat, as we've called it, um, a little bit in the last few weeks, you know, just kind of explaining to viewers what they can do. Um, and I know sharing some of those tips. Um, because it's it's pretty brutal this time of year, but it luckily is. the technical peak of tree pollen is right toward the middle part of April. So we're seeing those numbers go down, but folks still need to take the precautions. Absolutely, sure. you know, and I have learned a lot about pollen in the last yes. two months. Get the <laughs> All the I really never knew I was going to know this much about pollen. I could <laughs> probably write the pollen book now. But uh, we had the tree pollen that was just through the roof, but now like all the trees are out. So I'm assuming mm -hmm. that that pollen level will be coming down. Yeah. Uh, so that's uh, certainly a good thing. But uh, we have the uh, other pollen. Well, we had mold, I believe, that was, was still pretty high, but that uh, fluctuates too. I haven't seen today's uh, pollen count, Kendra, but uh, obviously still a lot of suffering out there. Mm -hmm. And the ragweed, uh, that doesn't kick in until August and September. So I know I suffer from that. So that's going to be another thing come late summer oh, into something. early fall. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> grass goes up a little bit during the summer and then of course the ragweed so there's always something but it does seem like the tree pollen it number one it you know causes some of the most severe allergies but also it's a thing that just coats every no. you know you can <laughs> see know. it on your car uh it's been awful i have a white car but it has not been white for about a month now and i'm just kind too, of a greenish tint like my shirt <laughs> yes exactly and you know with three kids and then i'm cheap i don't want to go get it go take it to the car wash and then have it look bad two days later so i'm just like you know i'm gonna ride through pollen season and then i'll just take it through the car wash as soon as i know those levels are going down but uh, yeah, it can be really frustrating for people, but luckily we're we're heading into some better times ahead. True. But um, but anyway, that's pretty much it for our podcast today. We did want to mention to anybody listening, if you ever have an idea um, for a topic or even some questions, you can actually email weather at foxcarolina.com. And that email will go to Bob, myself, um, and Nicole and Kylie. And, you know, so if you have any suggestions or just something you liked about the podcast, we're going to be doing even more of these as we move forward through the summer. Um, so, you know, it's a fun thing to do. It's nice because, mm -hmm. Bob, like, I, if you're like me, sometimes you just have a lot more to say than in the minute and a half you get for first weather or <laughs> 3.30 you get for full weather. We don't have the producer saying rap or, exactly. you know, 30 seconds left. We can just yep. kind of chat about it. We don't want to drone on to the point where we bore people or anything. <laughs> right. But, you know, uh, anyway, but I know for a lot of those folks who just kind of want to know what, what's been going on, we, we want to be here for you. And I think the next topic will likely be on the tropics as we get closer to that. Kylie and Nicole may be tackling that one. But, uh, but you'll see us here and there. But anyway, thanks for being here, Bob. And All right. Right. We will uh, have much more coming and uh, be sure to download. If you haven't subscribed to our podcast, you can on Apple Podcasts. I wish I was a podcast expert. I don't know where else you can get them. <laughs> I guess on Google Play. <laughs> Uh, go to our website. I know you can listen to them there. Um, but I always get mine off, you know, the iPhone uh, podcast or whatever. You can just search us um, whether or not to what degree or Fox. I think even Fox Carolina will pop it up in the search bar. Um, and then every time we have a new one, if you subscribe, it'll pop up so you'll see it. We should have one about every couple weeks. So that yeah. should be good. All right. Well, we'll see you later. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs>